All right, we're back for part two. We are. Um, you know, behind the scenes, the truth about American Idol, your experience from your perspective. Um, and where we left off the last time was um, you being in Washington, getting your golden ticket, kind of forgetting yeah. to get your golden ticket, but getting your golden <laughs> yeah, ticket, exactly. right? And kind of where I want to start this one, and maybe dig a little bit deeper on, is, um, you know, Luke Bryan in in your audition basically said you might be the biggest star we've ever seen and obviously he was referring to the three years that he's been on idol not yeah. all 18 seasons yeah. um but even so how well did, actually <laughs> right? it might be right no. how how did you feel when you heard that initially honestly i i honestly thought that it was kind of scripted and like it, like they'd been, like he'd been, for some reason, somehow he'd been told to say that. It just, I guess, in the moment, it just didn't feel real. I guess would be the way to put it. But I was just like, it just felt so unreal and just kind of like dreamlike. It's like, has he just been told to say that? Like, I don't know how I can receive such a high compliment. Um, but I mean, so I, I definitely do. I mean, that I was over the moon. I definitely. Um, I think later on came with a, bit, a few pressures which we can touch on but I think I mean yeah I mean that was such a kind thing um, and such a massive compliment to receive I know when when Glenn and I first heard it because we didn't he hear it until you came out through the doors and did I even repeat that yeah, though? well not when you initially came out you uh, what, what happened was I mean we we're all really super excited that you had made it through and you had your golden ticket but then after things had settled down because that whole day after Crazy. that was press and you know, in interviews it's and all blur, this other stuff. A total, total blur. Total blur. Even for me, it's a total blur. It was a Delirious. whirlwind. The next, like, six hours were just crazy. Um, and I, I, I mean, my initial reaction when you said, um, this is what they said, and you didn't repeat the exact words, but, you know, you had said, they said, this is the biggest star, or I was the biggest star they ever seen. It was, holy cow, like, that is so awesome. Like, wow. But then, <laughs> as every... Even as the day progressed and then every episode after and, you know, and you kept being asked about it like over and over yeah. and over. Um, and then you start watching. You can't help but watch social media and, and watch the reactions as the shows progress. Yeah. And people are like, biggest star. I don't think so. And they almost label you as if you had said it yourself. Tell me, as you read some of those comments, you're watching social media and, and people are attributing you saying that you're the biggest star even though you had nothing to do with that it's a complete yeah. surprise to you as it was to anybody else but they started to label you with that as if you thought of that yourself how did how did you react to the audience kind of turning that into a negative in some cases i mean you know i definitely think you always have to take things with a grain of salt i mean that was a massive compliment that to receive and it didn't feel real and you know um it kind of only meant that I had to prove myself so much more in the long run, which was a very was very um, big challenge for 19 year old me, even though I'm only 20 now, to try to take on. And um, that's on a, in front of the entire world on national television. Um, so it was definitely quite a mental whirlwind, just trying to kind of prepare and kind of prove that. And then and then, but how with with the comments online, I think. I think it was, I mean, I would read through some of the comments and like some were hateful and I would just kind of laugh. And then like occasionally you read down and you read down and then it's like, ooh, there's like one that kind of stinks. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? There is always a hundred times more love. And the best thing to do is, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinions. I think the best thing is to do is just keep trying to do my best and, you know, focus on the love at hand and, and all the love that I've been receiving, that I was receiving, which was just so heartwarming and heart filling um and i was lucky for that so that was what i chose to kind of focus on in that time yeah so i i have a question because i think to to cliff's point a comment like that will echo throughout the entire competition and i think it definitely put uh it definitely raised the bar for you to to yeah. move towards when lionel richie after luke and katie had gone and lionel then said what he said to you, which was you're on to something. Did that feel real? Did you feel the sincerity? Or was it still just a complete, is this happening? Lionel was quite a, that was just a different thing because that was hit me so deeply as a songwriter. Right. 
And like growing up, like I remember his CDs in my granddad's house, like <laughs> on the record player. Like, and I mean, that was just like, oh my gosh. Like, right. Like you're the dude that used to be on the very top of my granddad's CD player. Like it, it was crazy. And like, and I definitely, I mean, I grew up to, I grew up to it, like listening to his music through right. my family. And I mean, that was just, that was the most insightful comment, I believe. I mean, all, all the comments from the judges were amazing, but that was the one that I, that struck a deep chord with me just to really, it was so validating that my songwriting is kind of my, my needs to be my focus and where I, how I can drive my career and just keep, keep pouring my heart out, hopefully into these songs and hopefully they resonate with someone out there. So it, it, a lot of it is you, um, you get this super emotional reaction from Luke Bryan and I, I don't think it was scripted. I think, yeah, I don't either. Yeah. yeah I think I, the one thing I respect about all of the judges was that I really think they gave you their, their honest opinion. Although there are some times when, you know, well, one time in particular we're going to talk about um, in, in probably in the fourth episode actually it happened towards the end, but yeah. um, where it, it did seem like manufactured drama a little bit. Um, but that one didn't. That that definitely seemed like it was genuine. It might have been a little over the top, but I do agree with you on, on Lionel Richie's you know, comment on your songwriting. That means a lot. I, I don't think you know that that was hyped. I don't think that that was I mean, overly emotional. I think it was genuine. Lionel was just that kind of... Yep. I mean, they were all genuine at top. Like, like they they were all pretty genuine, amazing to to kind of um, to be able to learn from, and they really did care about everyone. But Lionel's comment, yeah, I mean, he's just such. He just emulates positivity. He was always trying to give good feedback to all the contestants and to really kind of um, give them stuff to work on. Which was, I mean, that was so validating to hear from him. So yeah. yeah. So so you come out. We're all excited. You come through the doors. You know, you're going to Hollywood. Awesome. And then the rest of the day, it was a mix of the press stuff, interviews. There was also other stuff that you had to start working on the sort of the business side of yeah. of of music and of idol, you know, paperwork to take care of. We're not going to get into that because it's not that great. But it, it, it like you don't see those things. You don't see yeah. the, all the stuff that goes into the production. I mean, side I, of it, the business. I, side I had to take a we all had to take psych exams. <laughs> and that's that's where I met Julia and Bilal and um. And then this awesome dude Evan, and I'm trying to think who. I mean, I mean, I met so many pe- so yeah. many great, wonderful people there, um, in the in the psych room, and, and yep. Hollywood Anderson. He was like, he was like, <laughs> I'm just gonna copy your answers because you seem like a sane white guy, <laughs> like a sane white guy. He, he's a he's a funny he, he yeah he's a good dude. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, and yeah, it was just not. Is a lot of behind the scenes, um precautions that they have to take and, and with the well, paperwork the one big precaution which was always our concern going into this we worry about the stress and how that might play out and yeah. what happens if you don't make it through and uh, and it turns out i mean they really do care and they they have uh you know uh, professional mental health professionals that work that we, with you that yeah. you, that would interview you and make sure that everything's cool like because these are ups and downs are you okay you know do you need to talk to somebody um and, and so that'll play out a little bit later in this conversation. So, I mean, but. yeah, I, I, we had to go into the meeting with, um, with the two, um, e- either one of the two psychologists and kind of give a rundown about us and our lives and kind of things that we've experienced, like just kind of telling them about us and, and what, what may, like things that have happened in our lives, you know, that, that, that may affect us. And then we also had to talk to the private investigator. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to ask him who, who was an awesome guy. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean the, he searched deep through my Facebook <laughs> and then found like, like it's, yeah, it was just very, in, it's like the lengths that they have to go, which obviously makes right. sense. You have to. Um, but yeah, I mean, so background, it's, it's almost like interviewing for a job, background checks, essentially ass- yeah. a be- behavioral assessments and, and, you know, psychological assessments Essential, just yeah. to make sure they're not going to bring you any harm. Like this yeah. isn't going to hurt you yeah. at any point in time. And, yeah, not, and, not to freak out anyone who's no, thinking about auditioning. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, but, no, it, exactly. but you have to, you have yeah. to, because this is, this becomes very stressful, which we're going to get into now because we, I, I just want to yeah. throw one thing out there throughout that process, that vetting process that they were doing. I have to say that you're getting out in front of that and the questions that you put up front to the producers about 
who's going to look after the contestants, who yeah. will be there if yeah. and when something happens. I thought that was really good because you were able to convey that to Louis so that at least you had that awareness, which I thought was really important because it's not just a reality TV show. It is, it's a whole entity. And I thought that was a really good thing that you did. Uh, well, thank you. I, my, I mean, my, you. Bi- my biggest concern is and, and will always be mental health, right? So, yeah. yeah. You know, for a lot of different reasons. And I think the big one for me um, and why that was my first question when they said, what questions do you have for the producers? My first question was, remember, we wrote these questions out. My first question was, who's going to be watching after these artists? I'm a fragile right? Right? <laughs> English boy. Yeah, you know, this is, this is all new. I mean, it's, it's yeah. opening up this, you know, you put yourself out on TV and, and I've th- my biggest TV appearance was dancing on air in the eighties oh, in, in in Philly, Channel which is a 17. Channel Seventeen dance show. <laughs> I was a teenager. That was my exposure. But don't know it. I know. Yeah, light years uh, before. Yeah, look your it up time, on YouTube. But... It's not. It's not pretty. My hair and my glasses. But I. You I mean so? But you watch enough reality TV and you you hear you know stories about people really breaking down. So they were very good about it, and I was very happy yeah. to see that. And um, let's move on now to <clears throat> Hollywood Week. Yeah. Right. So. You know, between your audition uh, in October and Hollywood Week, which happened in December, right? Um, we had a lot of time to kind of figure things out, and 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 there's a massive amount of work. When you when you go to Hollywood Week, you are thrown into it, and there's no way to actually prepare for it. So no tell way. me, tell me what you were thinking the first couple of weeks. You, you make it through. You come back home. It's like, oh, great, I'm through. Well, we just started preparing. We started kind of laying down um, little song, I, like song selections. That was basically the focus. We we had to pick songs. We had to pick like three or four songs and cut them down into the right time limit, and then record them and send videos of them to um, the auto music department, which is how they then get songs cleared from publishers and whatnot. And then that's kind of what that was the main focus, but. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, that's, we kind of thought we had this whole plan together. I started, um, I, I just one day figured out, I just started playing this new chord progression. And then I started singing Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell randomly. And I hadn't ever sung that song before. And I started singing it to this chord progression. And then we were just like, wow, that we feel like there was something there. So that ended up being the first song. And then that kind of was how that happened. But then we got to Hollywood week and... I mean, the first song was a good thing to be prepared for, but all the rest was just like... Throw it out the window. Thrown out the <laughs> yeah. window, yeah. 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 So so um, I wasn't there for that Monday. So you get in on Sunday in, in, in LA, right? I think so, so yeah. it was like Sunday. Yeah. Um, get yourself set in the hotel. They do kind of a maybe a dinner or whatever. You, you know, everyone's kind of meet and greet, and you're really starting to reconnect with a couple of the people that you had met in, in dc yeah, leon, leon yeah leon and um who's my roommate during hollywood week right shout out to leon meisen and then um and then monday you do the first audition which is ain't no mountain and we were pretty confident in that one i mean i think we were feeling really good like this is not that it, anything was a breeze but we were feeling really good because it was a little bit different it's a little bit old school you'd put your own little spin on it so i don't think that there's a whole lot to say about that although they did wind up playing they didn't play it in the main episodes but when covid hit right no i, th- I th- they th- came back i think i think they actually did play did it in the, yeah I, th- I think i think they may have real quick but, but it, must it, have been a real, it wasn't the whole thing i think i, it, well, I think it was the whole thing but it does it's yeah yeah it doesn't but matter i don't remember it, i think i think you know with that one um it, it felt like it was a done deal you know it felt like yeah. well, at you, least that round you're gonna get through you even when he was rehearsing that song you took complete ownership of that song to your point of it being a done deal, meaning that you nailed it. I mean, you, you had that song, you were confident and it was, uh, it was pretty safe to say. Katie that was, sorry. Yeah. Go no, go ahead. Katie was hoping. She said she was hoping for a bit more from that performance, but you know, that, that tended to be a running theme for you. <laughs> yes. the show. Like you would hear that. You never hit often. the mark again. And I, I think at, at that point, um, you really start to get introduced to vocal coaches in Hollywood Week, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how much work did you do on Ain't No Mountain with a vocal coach? Essentially none, really. Yeah. Just ran through it. Because there, there are 180 kids for to, to kind of just check in with the vocal coaches. I mean, you start to get more and more time with them as the idol journey progresses. 
But for a situation like that, I mean, they're not sleeping the entire night. They're up just going through each song with everyone just to make sure that everyone's good with their song and it's kind of just a one run through. Um, yeah. Makes sense. So you make it through that round, right? So it was, you know, like, like yeah, good deal. And then you get to this whole duet thing. Now, the, a lot of that backstory has been aired just in terms of when that episode aired and then kind of throughout. But yeah. Um, but where I'd like to go with this might be a little bit different just in terms of of your relationship with Francisco and how that quickly My that dude. how quickly that had to develop but there was some yeah there was some conflict there perceived or real there no there was definitely some conflict at, yeah at a period of time there right. i think um francisco and i had had met the, the the day before or no we'd met the first day of hollywood week we'd been introduced um to each other by the producers and kind of told that the judges may have had a little bet going on um like a little, to make a little friendly rivalry and then we ended up that lo- the, the end of that day the judges came in and said to everyone that they're doing duets um the next day and that's we were sitting next to each other and we just locked eyes and we were like Let, let's do it like let's show them that we're bros not rivals you know that was kind right. of the thinking behind that little did we know the night we were in for we then essentially <laughs> all get back to the hotel at about 11:30 ish and then we have to there are boards with songs up and we have to all start at a starting line and then run to to the song boards to try to get our name on one first so were you expecting that like because that was no because i had all these other songs planned like yeah. we had all these different like we were told to prepare for all these rounds so but so i had no idea that's how they were going to do it and that's kind of when all when all the song preparation from before kind of got thrown out of the window and um and I remember we ended up choosing Sign of the Times at first by Harry Styles. And then I started worrying that Katie compared me to Harry Styles in my audition. So she might, that might be too risky, too bold. So then we went with um, the script, Break break, break, break Even, which I used to listen to a lot growing up, but I never really knew the lyrics. It's one of those songs that I just kind of sang along like the main words too. And yeah, anyway, so we end up staying up all night trying to see how... I mean, it was a lot of pressure because we had both been told kind of we were, they had a bet against us. So we were trying to showcase both of our sounds and, 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 and unique voices in that one minute and 30 seconds. So we ended up staying up all night. I started getting anxious. He started getting anxious. One thing leads to another. I, um, it ended up being past 3.15, which is how we got on it, which is how we got our, our, duo name which is also one of the songs i auditioned with 315 by barzi we we ended up going to bed at about 4 30 and then i had to wake up at 5 30 to get ready the next day get makeup um even though i suck at doing my own makeup but i kind of had to and and to be ready for for cool time at i think it was probably 6 30 so i mean that's just insane to try to you can't live and be a human on one hour's sleep if if there's someone out there that can you know i want the recipe to what your diet is <laughs> and the supplements that you're taking the only people that can do that are called navy seals yeah right and that's it or so call cliff your cabbage yeah <laughs> that's I, true i don't yep. sleep too much but right. I, it, was there any point in oh so the conflict well it's well we'll get to the conflict in a second but as you're going through this and i don't know that you've actually ever been asked this question if you had to do it over again would you have picked a male or female again, or would you have picked someone different? No. Nope. No. Look, everything I'm a firm believer. Everything happens for a reason. Francisco is one of my really, really great friends now, and I think we're going to be friends for a long time. And I mean, I no that no, I would never in a million years change how that happened. All right. Because that that you get you know when when you're there uh, you know and they showed on TV where a lot of the uh, you know artists contestants are sitting as part of the audience because they're the only peop- other yeah. people that are there are your family. Patrick's right? you know? like everyone like go in the like <laughs> get in your seats and I was like bursting for a piss <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like can I leave I don't know what to do and then I just basically. St- yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I was in and out of there. But you're, the reason I asked that question <laughs> is because you're watching a lot of of the duets, and there was a lot of pairings of 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 uh, you know male male uh, male female, 
female, female. Mm-hmm. But the I thought that there, of course, the one pairing of of a, a couple of the female artists was just ridiculous um, with Michaela and. Um, uh, it was that Sanaya. memorable. <laughs> Michaela and Sanaya. Was it, were they together? Yeah, they were together. Yeah, 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 they yeah, were. yeah, they were together. And there was a little bit of conflict. Remember Sanaya? Oh, yeah, they had a bit of conflict there. But I mean, which, they, which they absolutely they killed. killed it. That was the killed most, one of the it. most, like, I had goosebumps their entire performance. Yep. And th- that's a good example of you know, working smartly and well throughout an evening <laughs> and not over rehearsing for a song the next morning. Right. right. But then you saw some of the, uh, you know, male female duets and i think most of them were just really really good um a lot of the male male duets did not do well that's actually true yeah Yeah. i'd never actually realized that but you you are right yeah Yeah. and that's why i asked that because if you hindsight being 2020 of course but you you look back on that and 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 you look back at the history of the show and male male duets i mean they'd actually never done duets before i mean well i they did them as part of other things here and there oh, like did people, they? yeah oh, you're just doing yeah, stuff, just right? on like the, just, in the finale yeah, episode yeah that kind of yeah, stuff yeah, you know sorry. and it just never played off very well to me um so so no regrets you're no, totally stressed absolutely yeah you're coming in that next day and i remember coming in um that night the night before you know yeah. um and you guys are working on stuff and you're freaking out i met you at the hotel and you came out and you're like you you look like I was on the verge of tears. Yeah, at that point, rat. it was like four a.m. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I yeah, it was a complete wreck. Well, my also as soon as as soon as I got to L.A., my phone stopped working. Sprint, you might need to improve your coverage. <laughs> no, but it, it really, it, I found out at the end of the week after all of that, it was just the fact that I needed to restart my phone, right. which was the biggest <laughs> kick in the oh butt. God. Honestly, <laughs> the it. biggest kick in the butt. Um, because I, I was not in any contact with my family. You guys, you guys are all my support system. Right. Um, and I had, I was completely, I mean, not that I had the time to talk to you guys, but mm-hmm. I was completely kind of locked away and just thrown into this absolute cyclone and tossed up in the air. And, and it didn't end. So I, everyone at this point that's seen the show knows what happened. You guys kind of really flubbed your way through. That performance and and Glenn and I actually watched it earlier today and we're and we're like you know you you actually didn't sing the correct lyrics no and a lot of people don't know that because no. like, I mean I love that song I just you, made them up it, yeah <laughs> honestly yeah, yeah. you and did you, it worked yeah, it, it, well if you didn't know well, the song, if it if you really go back and listen it's not yeah. English yeah. it really isn't and but. Francisco you know is not able to keep up with the song but I mean together I mean. It still wasn't like the worst duet performance. Could I, I mean, just say one thing? So, basically, what kind of the com- the conflict of the <clears throat> of the of our um, partnership that morning was? We were so tired. We were we were over rehearsing. We went up on stage. Each each duet had one chance to go up on stage in the morning. It was like a roll call to run through their performance once. And I mean, we're not used to being on a stage like that. I can't really hear him. I ended up singing a little bit louder than he was by mistake. And then he started, and the whole night before I'd been anxious, but then now he started worrying, thinking that I was going to try to steal the performance from him, right. which you did end up seeing happening in some of the duets throughout that day where people, it was more of a competition. But that's not how I, so I kind of, we ended up, we had to split up for a few hours, take a nap, and then like, because we just kind of were butting heads and he started really freaking out that I was going to try to screw him over, which I wasn't. And, we ended up to cut things short. We ended up just making a pact, and I said to him, "Look," and we couldn't remember any of these lyrics. And I was like, "Look, bro, like Francisco, if if we go down, we go down together, and we just I will have your back. We have each other's back, no matter what, through and throughout. You know, we're doing it. We're gonna see this through together, and and whatever happens, happens. But uh, we've got each other's back. And at that point, you're just you're." A broken, Delirious. emotionally broken <laughs> human being. You're Every physically time, tired. Yeah. You're t- you're com- you're emotionally drained. So is he, you know. And I'm I was uh, I had gone to the restroom uh, downstairs in the Orpheum, Orpheum Theater, and so I had he was uh, I was walking out. He was walking in, and I had a moment just to talk to him, and you know you, you could just see how nervous he was. I mean, you guys were just the negativity was green beating. in the face, yeah. and I was just like trying to stay awake and just sick to my stomach probably a bit on the verge of tears right. okay so 
for you guys, the the stress didn't end. Like you would think yeah. that the the um, getting through, like that sense of relief that you might have for that, but that's not what happened. <sighs> no, what, it is not. What happened? So we ended up getting back again really late. Long story short, I mean, luckily one of the so I mean, luckily Lewis Capaldi had just popped off, and he's my favorite artist at the moment. If you're on my YouTube channel, you can probably tell. You probably already know um, of you guys. But essentially, we got back. Same thing again. Just less people. Four boards up. We have to run to the boards to put our name down for a song. And the minute... I mean, I'd already had a Lewis Capaldi song, Forever, which was called Forever, prepared in my list of songs to sing for Hollywood Week. That wasn't the song that was on the board. It was Hold Me While You Wait, which luckily is one of the most beautiful songs I've heard this year and um, one of my favorite songs. So basically, I end up just choosing that one. I still end up staying up all night. You know, I'm overthinking things. I'm on the end of my tether, like emotionally, mentally, just completely deteriorating, but I kind of feel hopeful. Like I'm like, oh, like I made it through that. Um, And I mean, essentially ended up getting to bed again about 4 a.m. after waiting to see the vocal coaches and and I went to bed like kind of feeling a little bit relieved and then I woke up and just the days of just about an hour of sleep each night really caught up to me the next morning as soon as I opened my eyes well first of all Leon my roommate he had been sent home the night of duets so It was like I was I woke up, I went to bed and woke up in an empty hotel room with someone I was comfortable with. And now it was just like the waters were just so uncomfortable, like you just kind of anyway, as soon as I opened my eyes and when I was in bed, um, when my alarm went off, I just my entire body started just shaking uncontrollably from head to toe. And I just couldn't get to stop and I can't I went into a panic attack um that lasted for quite a while and I mean I've experienced anxiety before but nothing compared to that I've never had a panic attack I don't think really um I've just never experienced anything like that and I'm lucky that at the like lately you know it's been I've been fine um but I didn't know what to do I didn't know what was happening to my body I was I just started literally hypervent literally hyperventilating I had no idea what was going on. I got in the shower. I, I was thinking, oh, maybe like hot water might like help my body calm down. Like I have no idea what's going on. And I, nothing, nothing was working. And I started pacing around my hotel room in my underwear. And I was looking out at the window out of the sit on the city of LA. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can't do this. Um, I can't handle this. I need to go home. Um, I called you. I told you like I was done. I started packing my suitcase. I locked myself in my hotel room because I was afraid because that entire week, you know, I mean, Hollywood week is the the main reality TV section of Idol, which is obvious and that's fair enough completely. I mean, they're making a TV show. There's no better time to get the drama when it all comes out in Hollywood week. Um, But I locked myself in the hotel room because I was so afraid of cameras catching me having an absolute mental breakdown which I'd never experienced something like that before and I I was just crying and packed up my suitcase as I said called you I, oh, I, I called my family and then they're all like they had just gotten to LA they'd rented an Airbnb you know like it wasn't cheap to fly from Philly to LA and to rent an Airbnb um so they were all kind of like oh like you can do this like like, kind of, like, stop being, a, like, my sister, my mom handed the phone to my sister, and my sister was like, stop being a baby, she really said other words, but Good I'm not gonna, DZ. I'm not gonna use, she's a, she's a sweetheart, but right. I'm not, yeah, she, she, she has a side to be her, be nice, yeah, be nice, yeah, um, fair enough, but she, yeah, she basically, essentially, in kindest words possible, Man she up. said, she said, yeah, don't be a baby, like, do this, like, we've just come here, and that did not help. I I told her to go f herself. I was like, like this is not what I need because I was having a you full were, on you mental, were, yeah, you were right. stressed. Full yeah. full on mental breakdown. Honestly, I've never experienced anything like it. So I call you, and then I mean, you can really talk about the. You can take that because you, I I wouldn't let you get off the phone with me and. No, so so I was staying with your parents uh, at their Airbnb, and and your sister was there as well. So 
Um, yeah, I called you uh, from the Airbnb, and you did not want me to get off the phone. You were freaked. It was it, it was very concerning to me. This is exactly what I was worried about, yeah. just in terms of the stress of the whole thing. So I get myself dressed with you on the phone, and I get into an Uber, and I'm not from five minutes from the theater, and I get over to the theater, or I'm sorry, your hotel, get over to your hotel. Now, normally they don't, well, they don't let anyone else go into these hotel rooms for good reasons, security yeah. and other reasons. But at that point, we had nothing to lose. You were going home. In your head, you were going home, right? Yeah. And um, my job at that point was two things. The first was to just make sure you were okay, right? And then the second was to find out what the real problem was because what what I knew, what Glenn knew as soon as Glenn found out about the situation, which was a little bit later in the morning, was you can't go home for that reason. Yeah. Not that reason. Any other reason. I hate the competition. I don't want to be here. This isn't good for me just in terms of my music career. And it's, it's just not fun. And, and like, I don't see the point. Like, I get all that. Being nervous was not going to help. Right. So. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I literally said to you, look, I need to go home, even if this means like you don't want to manage me anymore. Like right. I hope you could, you'll like still be my friend. Like it's okay. Like I can't believe I was in such a mental state where I would almost, I almost gave up on my entire long life passion and all that I've essentially given my life to. Well, what we talked about and what we knew, because I've had those moments, Glenn has had those moments. Every, everyone that's at a certain point in their life has had the moment that that can break you, and. What we knew that you didn't know at the time because you hadn't been through that was if you can push through this, even if you don't go further in the competition and you completely fall flat on your face and get on that stage and sing a song terribly and, and you go home, you, they don't put you through. Fair enough. But not getting up and performing, yeah. which was your lifelong passion, you would have been done. Mentally, I think recovering from that, I think you would have, but I think yeah. it would have taken a really long time. And especially with the show airing, and going on, and and then you... Even with what happened, it took a long time to get yeah. mentally stable again. Right. It took months to yeah. kind of get to an okay place. But one yeah. of the things, and, and again, it was when you told me what was going down, and I said, well, what are we going to do? And you said, Glenn, no matter what, he can't quit over that because he will always look at that as a huge regret or, you know, just... Not being able to power through that. So yeah. once you said that, I was like, all right, we're going to be fine. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll, I mean, I'm we'll get so grateful and lucky to have the both of you and my family. I mean, they're incredible. Well, you got a really good support system. In that moment, yeah, yeah. I mean, I Well, that's when it matters, right? We, we wouldn't be having this conversation right, right now yeah. if it weren't for the help that you both provided yeah. that day and Cliff, especially because he was there. So <clears throat> the plan, my plan, was to just walk you step by step. And oh, we yeah. literally started with, can you just please go put some clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm up, I'm in your hotel room, and just you know, pacing you're, a, you're just in pacing underwear. in your underwear, and um, and you know, and then Jensen showed up, Ryan showed up, Jensen, one of the one He's of the directors, producers, right, right, and Ryan's one of the the supervising producers. Um, my friend, yeah, my yeah, friends who are on the production yeah, your team, friends yeah. are on the yep, and re really great people, you know, on from Idol that they genuinely cared. You talk to They're incredible. You talk to the exec them. producers. Um, you know, they called you. Patrick called you. The, the, they rallied. Um, they Patrick, really they rallied. rallied. They they helped me in ways. I mean, they all. I mean, everyone that day just came to support me, and all the idol team and production team. They really put a helping hand out to me to just make me feel okay and to help me get through this. And I mean, I owe so much to them as well because they really do care so much, and they really. I mean. I wouldn't be here talking with you guys maybe about this entire thing if it weren't for them and you. But, I mean, the production team was just, they're amazing individuals. And they them. and that was the day that Alejandro was visiting you guys. Yeah. Just it, it just happened to be, right? Yeah. What happened for you with Alejandro? So, essentially, he was doing a Q&A for everyone. And, you know, a few of the producers kind of came up to nudge me and were like, hey, like, do you want to, like, ask a question? But I was like in front of the contestants and I'd already felt really strange um, in, about my duet performance the last day because I saw so many amazing people, amazing talented people who I thought gave stellar performances go home. And then I kind of, 
I was one of the only performances that really, I mean, at least to my, to me and through my eyes, that really messed up. And I felt like I didn't deserve to be there. And I felt guilty. And I thought all of them, all the other contestants were looking at me like I didn't deserve to be there, which I don't know if I don't think that was the case. I mean, they're all amazing, but I didn't want to voice any question. I was in no position to kind of put myself out there in front of a group of people at that point to ask Alejandro a question. And then the producers called me over once he was done. And Trish um, and Megan, the executive producers, they're such lovely people. They really are. And they're fantastic at what they do. I mean, they're just, everyone in production is just great through and through. And Trish kind of put, I had a little bond with her because she's also English. She's, uh, she's from London, I believe. And so she's, she's a very familiar, warm kind of um, relationship um, that, that I kind of had, um, that I kind of perceived with her. And then she pulled me over and said, look, Alejandro is here and, and he said like he would love to talk to you for a few minutes. He experienced a lot of what you were go a lot of what you are going through last year when he was during Hollywood in- when he was in Hollywood week. Blah, blah, blah. And um, then they kind of introduced me and I start I talked to Alejandro for about five to ten minutes and he told me about his struggles in Hollywood week and how he almost left. And really, I mean, it would just it helped me jump over that barrier because he was just he's he just he just it was so relatable and it was so real and I mean he's such a genuine person that it really just it really helped me jump over that fence to really be like um, I can I can I'm gonna do this yep. and we and so we we took it step by step that day you got yeah. dressed we got you to the theater you did your rehearsal you talked to Alejandro we then got something to eat even though you're not supposed to leave you did yeah. you know and the PAs were going crazy yeah the PAs were going nuts <laughs> but um, we went and got something to eat. Shay met us for a little bit and just kind of talked through it. Everyone just kind of talking you through it. And, you know, just one inch steps at a time. And, ev- and eventually you found yourself later that day on stage singing uh, your Louis Capaldi song. Right? Yeah. And it was weird because I kept trying to nap throughout the day. But every time I'd nap, I'd start. I was so f- terrified to close. I was like falling asleep in my seat. And I was so terrified to fall asleep because... Every time I would wake up having a panic panic attack again, with and my whole body would be shaking again. So I was like, try to stay up. I ended up going out on stage. Um, it was it was really cool. I mean, I'm not typically a religious person, but I was one of the first people to go up that day. I think I was third. And Cameron, who was just incredible, such a light, honestly, um, such a bright light and she kind of she did a prayer circle she just kind of and 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 I was that's something I'm not used to but it was such a, it was such a spiritual feeling for me just being so connected with these other three contestants we all held hands in a circle and while they were religious and I wasn't it was such a spiritual experience for me because it was like we're all here in this moment together and you know we're going to bless you we're going to bless one another and that's kind of what what we did and that really kind of gave me some comfort going out on stage and then i went out and i was my hands were shaking i was green in the face and i um it was katie's always funny cuz she kind of broke the ice a bit she was like talking with my mom and and um and then i started singing and all the emotion kind of poured out and i think i mean that by far was my most raw performance that I've ever given in my life, I think, because I was so at the end of my tether. But you, you did really well. And, and Thank you. you know, we, I have watched that performance several times. I know, Glenn, we just watched it yeah, earlier today. Yeah, we watched today. it earlier. I should have kind times. of brushed up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but so, so you do that performance. Everyone does their final performance. It was about 67 or so that were in yeah. the final group. Um, and then we wait, right? So, so what happened after that like you guys were put in a holding room and there's nothing that we can't see you so they usher all of the families out of the theater completely out like they literally kick you out of the theater so that they can the judges and the producers can all get together and the judges pick who is going to hawaii from that group yeah so um so we're you're inside in that really cold room that they put you in. in yeah, the it was the holding room I have nightmares about. Yep. <laughs> and we're outside. And so we're, we know it's going to be a while and they, they kept us up to date and, um, and, uh, you know, two buses pulled up and those buses, we talked to the drivers and said, well, these are the buses for the people that are going home. Right. So they're going to go back to the hotel first and, and get their stuff. So then we're sitting there waiting and, um, so, so at, 
about three hours in, they finally come out to make the announcement like they're ready. And they're going to separate us into two groups. Right? Getting flashbacks. I know. It's, it's crazy. So, it's okay. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and um, and they say, if if we call your loved one's name, your the, the contestant's name, if we call you, we want you to go stand down the street. Like literally it was, uh, it was maybe – a hundred feet from the entrance to the theater, half a block yeah. or so. Clearly, if your name was called in that group, you weren't going through because there's no way that they would keep you away from the theater. At least that was my thinking. So they start calling names and I start counting. Now, only 40 people can go to Hawaii. That was what they were taking to Hawaii. And so I'm counting names as they're calling them. And they called out 27 names. So you knew that that was the group that was going home. And your name wasn't in that group, but I think one. So we're we're of yeah, course he was counting. <laughs> we we were um, we're in the group. So if they didn't call your name, they said you go stand on the other side of the entrance to the theater, like where you would normally line up every morning. Very, very obvious. Very what obvious. Was what was going yeah, on? Yeah, right? yeah. So what I what I felt bad about was so here's this group of really happy parents and girlfriends and boyfriends and brothers and sisters and other family and friends we're all jovial laughing having a good time because we know we're in the group that's going through and it must have felt so it was horrible so for weird because then you look over at the group that's down not, the road people a bit. are crying they're really upset you know and, and it's it, people's it, dreams you know it it's is. people's dreams really and livelihoods is. and that's when it became real and then they the group that wasn't going through they walked them in front of us and brought them to a side of the theater because they brought all of your belongings out and put it in the vestibule of the theater, the entrance to the theater, so that as e- even for the folks that were making it through, but they put the families near that gate. There was they had everything locked behind all the, the gate belongings where all the belongings yeah, were, oh and they gosh. were sending folks, the the kids that artists that didn't make it through one by one, grabbing their stuff, getting on the bus, crying, whatever. You know, I think the only person that wasn't crying was Margie Mays, actually. Really? Like yeah. she, she was like, yeah, oh, this she's, this she's just, awesome. She she's, is awesome. She's, she's so, lovely. She is the happiest person I've ever met in my life. She, um, she is you know, a white light. But Johnny made it through, and so I think she knew that. And she, this was just another, I mean, she took it seriously. She was but, very yeah. strong in that situation very, very for him and herself. Yep. So then after all that, uh, the, the, they all get on the bus and leave. Their families leave. So it's us, and, and they put us behind the doors, and then Patrick comes out, as Patrick says, and, and basically like, here's what you're going to do, right? And he was Don't very, call him Pat. Cool. Don't call him Pat. He's or Patsy. Patrick. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 he no, won't no. have He's it. Patrick. Um, and he deserves to be called whatever <laughs> he wants. Absolutely. Um, and, and so then what happened was we um, stood behind the doors. They opened up the doors. But right before that, we could hear, that's when they announced it, because they split you into three groups. That's when we could hear them talking to you guys so one group that they had already left right so they were the group that were, were that was the 27 not going through but yeah. then there were two other groups left and they were telling you guys you you were making it through so we heard one set of screams and then about five minutes later we heard another yeah. set of screams well i see i kept hearing sets of claps yeah. and i was like we and we, i was a lot we were the, in the last room and we were just waiting there for we were waiting in that room for three hours sitting on the floor in wow. in sitting on the floor, cross-legged in this room, all shaking and kind of holding each other's hands. And just like, like I was literally, Grace Lear was just shaking and I was like, just holding her. I was like, we're going to be fine. And we just kind of holding each other. And then Jeb and I, Jeb was on my left and we, and we tackled it. When we, when we found out we were going through, we tackled each other, but we, we heard all the, we heard round, rounds of applause. So we were like, we have to be the, the one going home. But you weren't. And you made it through. They open the doors, and Patrick lo- literally lets everyone through the door. Then lines you up. They li- they lined us all up. I stood in the back because my thing was this is your family's moment, not mine. So I just stood in the back and waited. And they and then everyone's running. And as they they bring you guys out, everyone's running, and then you know everyone's they're throwing lays around and flowers and all this stuff. Everyone's really happy. Um, and that's kind of how that day ended. It, it was, was just, all a state of delirium, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were crying like crazy because I, I was think crying it all when I got had... through. We were all crying, yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Of and I mean, we're we going to come to an end here of, yeah. of, of the Hollywood week, but I just want to say that the most in my life that I've learned, probably the biggest. Exp- I mean, aside from Russell's passing, and and maybe a few other things, but that week was the biggest week of growth 
and just the biggest learning experience that I've ever had because do not give up on yourself. Um, and this is to anyone out there watching this. I think I literally, I was on the verge of completely crumbling. I was a complete shadow of of who I am in that moment. And, you know, I've I learned you, no one knows how to sail through a storm. No one knows how to sail through a hurricane until you actually just do it. And that's what you have to do and just take that leap even when you're broken and you're afraid and you have nothing, no hope left. It literally gets me emotional talking about it because you don't know what's around the corner and, you know, you can really get through it. And that's a great place to end. So part three coming up wow. and we're going to talk about I Hawaii. I just cry on TV I and I cry on podcasts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, Louie. And we're going to we're gonna, um, we're gonna come back with part three and uh, look forward to talking about Hawaii. Sounds great. All right. Awesome. Aloha. All right, Aloha. everyone. Peace out.